In the last video we saw that a 2x2 two two array of numbers A, B, C, D gives us a geometric transformation of the plane. And I'm going to write R2 for the plane. So, you know, R means the real numbers. In other words, the number line. R2 means pairs of real numbers. So, column vectors, where X and Y are both real numbers. R3, any guesses? It's going to be triples of numbers x, y, z, all three being real numbers, and in general, Rn is n-dimensional space. So what was this geometric transformation associated to this 2x2 two two array? Um, it was the, th the map that sent the vector x, y to a b c d applied to x y where if you remember this was defined to be a x plus b y c x plus d y the two components so you should think of this two by two matrix as just four numbers that encode a geometric transformation in the same way these two numbers x and y encode a position in two-dimensional space these four numbers are encoding a transformation so you should think of a matrix as like a numerical representation of a transformation of the plane so um, let's let's do a couple of examples write down some matrices and see what transformations we get so um, let's take uh, this matrix well if I apply this to the vector x y I'm gonna get x 1 times x 0 times y and 0 times x 0 times y that's x 0 in other words, this is the thing that takes a point in the plane with coordinates x, y and projects away the vertical part of that, the y part and just remembers where it was on the x-axis. Okay, so you should think of this as a, a projection map. Is a projection to the x-axis, just a vertical projection. Uh, let's do another example. This one is a bit of a bit of a non-example, but it's kind of important. It's going to come up again and again throughout the course. If I take one zero zero one and I apply that to x, y, what do I get? I get 1 times x, 0 times y, 0 times x, 1 times y, I get x, y. In other words, this is the transformation that does nothing. It leaves everything where it was. This is called the identity transformation. So it sounds kind of silly, but it turns out to be quite important basically because you can think of this matrix playing the role of the number one right if you multiply a number by one it doesn't change if 
you multiply a vector by the identity matrix, it doesn't change. So this matrix here is the identity matrix, the two by two identity matrix. And it's got a name, people often write it I. I'll sometimes write it I, I'll sometimes forget and just write one uh, because it behaves so much like the number one that I often don't distinguish. Right, before we do any more examples, I just want to tell you a very useful lemma which we're going to use to analyze the rest of the examples. So the lemma says um, let A be the matrix A, B, C, D. Uh, let E1 be the vector 1, 0 and E2 be the vector 0, 1. So remember E1 is the guy that points 1 to the right and E2 is the one that points 1 up. Um, then a, E1, it's another column vector. Which column vector is it? It's the first column of A. In other words, it's AC. And A, E2 is the second column. BD. So this is very useful because in fact, once you know where these two vectors go, it turns out you know where every vector goes. Um, so it's kind of enough to understand where these two guys go. Um, these two vectors, I'm going to call these basis vectors. Um, you'll see in uh, later modules on linear algebra um, exactly what this word basis means. It basically means you can write any other vector as some combination of these two in a unique way. Um, but for me basis vector really just means the one that points in the x-direction unit one, the one that points in the y-direction unit one. If you're in three dimensions that would also be the one that points in the z-direction one amount. Uh, so lemma, it's very easy to prove. Uh, you just do the matrix multiplication. I'll just do the first one. A, B, that row, if we multiply that into the column of the vector, we get A times 1 and B times 0. And the second row, we get C times 1 and D times 0. And that is the first column of A. And the, the other computation is, is similar. But this means that you can, you know, you don't actually have to multiply any matrices out to figure out where your basis vectors go. You just look at the columns of A. So let's do another example. Let's take A to be 0, 1, 1, 0. So where does E1 go? Remember, E1 is, is this 1, 0 vector. Well, it goes to the first column of A. The first column is 0, 1. And that is E2. Where does E2 go? It goes to the second column, which is 1, 0. That's E1. In other words, these two just get swapped. So there's E1. It ends up pointing vertically upwards. There's E2. It ends up pointing in the red direction. So they get switched. And it's not hard to imagine what's doing that. It's a reflection in this orange line. The 
average line x equals y. Uh, so let's just check if x equals y, that means it should be, we're, we're on the orange line, so we should be fixed. So what happens if we apply a to the vector x, x, right? x, x lies on the orange line. So what happens? Well, I get 0, 1, x, x, that gives me 1 times x, and 1, 0 times x, x, that gives me 1 times x. So a, x, x equals x, x. So that's telling us exactly that points on the orange line are fixed. which is what you expect from a reflection. In fact, this trick of looking for fixed directions will turn out to be very useful later on. So uh, let's do another example. Let's do a equals zero minus one, one, zero. Okay, where does E1 go? goes to the first column that is 0 1 which is the same as e2 where does e2 go it goes to the second column that's minus 1 0 that's minus e1 so here's e1 here's e2 What's happening is this red vector is getting rotated to this blue vector. That's this E1 goes to E2, and E2 is getting sent to minus E1. That's the guy that points in the opposite direction. Like this. So this is a 90 degree rotation. Around the origin. Right, zero, zero is the origin here. And uh, it's supposed to be a zero. Okay, you should have been able to guess this if you remembered from last time that the formula for a rotation by theta is cos theta minus sine theta, sine theta, cos theta. Because when theta equals, well, let's say pi over 2, we're working in radians or 90 degrees, then cos of theta is 0 and sine of theta is 1. So then the matrix becomes uh, 0, minus 1, 1, 0, which is exactly the, the one we were looking at in this example. So this is a special case of what we did in the last video. Let's just do one more example. Let's take A to be 1, 1. 0, 1. So under this matrix, under this transformation, E1 is going to the first column. First column is 1, 0. That's the same as E1. The second column, is where E2 goes to, is 1, 1. Let's try drawing what's going on. E1 is fixed. E2 ends up pointing in this direction. That's the 1, 1 direction. So it gets slanted over to the side. OK. 
Okay, let's just imagine what happens if we went further up the y-axis. So if I apply 1101 to uh, 0, 2, for example, I'd get 1 times 0, 1 times 2, 0 times 0, 1 times 2. So I'd end up in the 2, 2 direction. So this vector up here, height 2, ends up uh, here in the, in the 2, 2 direction. So you can see that whole vertical axis gets slanted into this this pink axis pointing in the x x equals y direction so this is what's called a shear it's everything's being sheared in the x direction so the x direction stays fixed everything else tilts over in the, in the same in the, in the x direction so again you can see there's a fixed vector. E1 is fixed by this transformation. Um, and that's kind of useful information. It tells you something about the geometry of what's going on. I just want to do one more example. Sorry, I lied. That wasn't the last example. This is. Um, so let's suppose someone gives you this matrix. So minus 3, 16, minus 1, 5. Okay, so all the other ones we had were pretty simple. They all had like zeros, ones, minus ones, and stuff. So this one is a bit messier. Um, so what I'm going to tell you is this guy is a shear, but not around along the x-axis. It's, it's a shear in a different direction. So the fixed direction is something else. The question is, if someone gives you this matrix you know, and told you it was a shear, how would you figure out what was the fixed direction? So this has a fixed direction. What is it? How do we find it? Well, let's pick a vector x, y that points so if x, y points along the fixed direction, then what does that mean? It means that a x, y equals x, y. That's what it means to be fixed. And now we can write down what this equation means. So minus 3, 16, minus 1, 5, x, y, equals x, y. Well, let's multiply this, this out. So minus 3 times x plus 16 times y is going to be our first component. Second component, minus x plus 5y. And now saying that this vector equals this vector, that says the x coordinates have to agree and the y coordinates have to agree. So that's saying um, x equals minus 3x plus 16y and y equals minus x plus 5y. Now this is a pair of simultaneous equations and what we're going to see pretty soon is you know, matrix equations like this and simultaneous equations are, are the same thing so trying to solve a system of simultaneous equations you can you can write it in matrix form and and vice versa so um, okay let's try and solve these equations uh, with this first one I'm going to add 3x to both sides so I get 4x equals 16y and the second one, I'm going to add x to both sides to get the x over here. And I'm going to subtract y from both sides. And I get x equals 4y. And actually, these two equations are the same equation in disguise. It's not a very good disguise. I just multiply the bottom one by 4 
to get the top one. So these are just the same as saying x equals 4y. But that's great, that tells us an equation for the fixed line, the fixed direction. So, you know, y equals 1 over 4x is the equation of the fixed line. So, if this is a shear, it's a shear along the y equals 1 over 4x line. Um, so not every matrix is going to have a fixed direction. That's quite a special thing, having a fixed direction. Um, but when it happens, you know, it tells you something about the underlying geometry. Okay, in the next video, I'm going to talk about 3 by 3 matrices, higher like, dimensional spaces.